It's every farmer's nightmare. Doing an early morning livestock check to find a mangled carcass lying lifeless on the ground. The culprit, wild dogs. This is the reality for many farmers in the western regions of Queensland. Dry conditions and drought has seen an influx in the number of wild dog attacks on sheep and cattle properties. Certainly um, the drought has had a significant impact on um, landholders' ability to manage dogs and with the drought it tends to push dogs into areas to seek food. So all of our native wildlife, um, including dogs, are affected by the drought and drought conditions and it becomes more difficult for animals to source feed and water so it pushes them into areas um, where livestock are contained um, and will push more into peri-urban and urban areas as well as they seek food and water. Beef producers are able to sell their damaged stock at a lower price, but sheep producers are copying the brunt of the bite. Lambs are an easy target, with small chances of surviving, causing a downturn in the sheep and wool industry. <coughs> The agriculture industry estimates the economic impact of wild dogs to be approximately $60 million per year. Wild dogs have no perception of property boundaries. They move across land freely, leaving behind a trail of bloody destruction. Jan Chambers has faced wild dogs both personally and from a local government perspective. She is a sheep producer from Mangalala in southwest Queensland. Her property is home to 5,000 merino sheep. For 15 years, Jan trialled different ways to control wild dogs in a bid to reduce the number of attacks on livestock, but to no avail. We were baiting some of the rougher country in the area to try and control the dogs. Also, we were paying towards a trapper and um, just finding that it wasn't, wasn't solving the situation. We were still having issues, yes. The distress caused by finding the aftermath of a wild dog attack was taking its toll on Jan. We actually were mustering one day and found one just after it had happened and you know there's the sheep and it's whole, the whole entire insides are on the outside and you just think you know it's um was really a massive drain on you. Wild dogs also hit Jan and her husband financially. Well, naturally, you take to, at today's value of sheep, even if you gave an average of $100, so you lose $200, um, that's a fairly significant. And also the fact that you don't put another, say, 800 lambs on the ground per year has a massive indent into your profitability. Wild dogs aren't just leaving their mark on producers, but they're also affecting local communities. We don't have the shearing teams we used to have in town, so therefore we don't have the kids at the school, we don't have the people spending the money. So, you know, we've got... Small towns like the Mudabara and Aramac and those small towns north of Longridge there that hardly have anybody in them anymore due to the fact, and a, a big contributor to that, it's not the only thing, but the big contributor to that is the, is the downturn in the sheep and wool industry because people can't keep sheep on the ground anymore. In 2011, Biosecurity Queensland undertook the wild dog management strategy to address the problem. Managing wild dogs has to be a collaborative effort, um, understanding that um, all landowners in a particular area um, need to work together um, to manage dogs and it needs to be coordinated as well. So the strategy was built around the idea that um, we need to create awareness and participation for landholders, local government and the state government to all work together to manage wild dogs in, in these areas. And the strategy worked, especially in providing funding for exclusion fencing. Standing at almost six feet tall, exclusion fences have been one of the most effective methods to reduce wild dog attacks on livestock. Ten years ago, they didn't exist, but now they're popping up everywhere. In some communities, landholders are working with their local government and neighbouring properties to construct cluster fences. Over the years since then we had seen a rapid rise in the number of dogs in our region that were coming in as scalps. So it got to a point I suppose that something had to change. The programs that were in place with the baiting and trapping and that sort of thing was not solving the problem. So then um, council has now gone down the road of applying for funding. We've now had two rounds with the exclusion fencing. These can stretch up to 300 kilometres, protecting thousands of hectares. It's been two years since Jan finished building 31 kilometres of exclusion fencing around her property and the results have been extraordinary. 
Our lambing rates have increased around that 95% the last two years and um, not having the stock losses in our growing sheep and, and everything's so much calmer. Your ewes don't wander off from your lambs. When they're lambing, they mother up much better. Your wool grows better, just a um, whole win-win situation, yeah. Obviously marking more lambs, they're getting more lambs on the ground because they're not being eaten. Um, you know, the ewes are actually producing better because they're not being harassed and run around by dogs, so they're obviously falling pregnant better. Um, and they're obviously getting those sheep through to adulthood, therefore, you know, they've got the genetic line, things are happening there. And like I said, the, the mental health side of things are a lot more positive. They feel better, you know, the drought's very ordinary out there at the moment, but they're still getting, you know, positive feedback from producers saying this is a really good thing for us. But it doesn't come cheap. Time and cost often outweighs the decision for long-term benefits for landholders. Just one kilometre of fencing can cost up to $8,000. The Queensland Feral Pest Initiative came out of the wild dog management strategy to maintain funds for exclusion fences. Since 2015, the Queensland Government has spent over $19 million to assist regional communities in constructing exclusion fences and control invasive animals. Producers can also access funding through a sustainability loan with the Queensland Rural and Industry Development Authority. Usually the loan program we use for exclusion fencing is the sustainability loan. Uh, it's about putting concessional finance under a property improvement project like a, an exclusion fence um, and uh, getting that infrastructure in fairly quickly so that the, the business can recover from the impact of wild dogs and um, other pressures on total grazing management and, and other issues around that. The loan provides the much needed funding to producers to purchase equipment and tools to construct the fence. Uh, essentially the sustainability loan can be used for pretty much all the, the costs incurred in the uh, clearing of the existing site, the establishment of the, the new site uh, and the new fence, uh, materials, uh, contract labour, machinery hire, all those sorts of costs that go into building a, a decent exclusion fence. It's the fence you don't want to sit on for too long. Jessica Miller, reporting for UQ.